I think there was is an understanding that the situation is actually getting worse and worse, not just in Turkey, but they've seen and, and watched and are aware of how bad the military actions are that Turkey has undertaken in um, northern Iraq, Bakur area. And there's a lot of people are really appalled at it. We're also hearing about the bombardments in Kobani, the use of drones. We've obviously seen the ethnic cleansing and the killings that have gone on. And I think there's a genuine anger that whilst Turkey is trying to play this mediator role with Russia and Ukraine, it is actually doing some of the very exact same things that it is publicly condemning Russia for doing. So there was an anger and we want it put on record that we think it is appalling, they should cease doing it. So the 16 um, unions wrote to the ambassador here in the UK to make that clear. We've told them we would like a meeting with them to discuss it. We haven't had a reply, it was only sent a few days ago, but I'm almost completely sure they will do as usual and won't reply, will ignore it. In fact, I have here, the last time we wrote about um, the need to free Abdullah Erjelan, they simply refused to accept the letter and sent it back. So I would expect a similar sort of reply, but we will keep trying. And I think um, refusing to even meet and discuss it shows how afraid they are of even talking about the issue. Yeah, we, we've been firmly of the opinion for a number of years that there can only be a negotiated solution to the conflict there. Um, we know from our own experience in the UK in Ireland that you can try to win things militarily, but if there's a big part of the population that really feels it's being oppressed and having its human rights um, denied, then you simply can't do that. People will always resist and always try to express and fight for their their rights and their freedoms. So based on our own experience and also what we've witnessed in Colombia and other places, in the end, people have to talk to each other and try to find a solution. Now, we know that was the case between 2013 and 2015 until events took a very, very nasty, bad turn again. So yes, we're saying that is the only way to resolve this and the only person with the moral and political authority to really take that forward is Mr. Erjelan. So the first thing they should do is stop the um, inhumane and illegal way that he's being held. It is utterly disgusting that he's being treated in that manner. They should free him and they should create the space again to try and resolve these things properly in a peaceful manner. Me personally, in 2014, when ISIS was running rampage and, you know, a vile, vile um, outlook and way of de dealing with people, the resistance in Kobani, I think, just caught people's attention because it was such a heroic and desperate resistance so we issued a statement at that time i think it was the first one that my union did saying that calling on the turkish government erdogan to allow kurdish fighters to cross through turkey and help their brothers and sisters in kobani um we then traveled to um uh to diabakir at the time a little while later 2016, when the attacks were going on in Sur District and um, Sulupi and elsewhere. Um, I've been to, with my international work in the Union, I've been to many conflict zones like Colombia and Palestine and so on. And I thought I was ready for what I would see, but I was astonished at the level of violence and frankly, it felt like the Syrian civil war was taking place in Turkey. So we came back and, and, you know, started to discuss how we should build the solidarity. And we figured the best way to do it was around the campaign to free Abdullah Öcalan as part of a wider peace process. But personally, I started reading 
and getting to understand in much more detail um, what the history was, what the principles were, how the Kurdish political movement had evolved over time, how Erdogan, I always say, helped the left, in my view, move out of some of the straitjacket we were in of thinking and to think more creatively with the ideas of democratic confederalism and so on. And then having had the privilege of seeing um, some of those ideas put into action in Rojava, e even in um, Diyarbakir when the HDP were in charge, some of the progressive politics, the co-chair system, the respect for women's rights. And I have to say it was exciting, interesting and inspiring. And everywhere where we talk to people and try to get them to understand this broader outlook, I think there's a huge amount of um, agreement with what the ideas are that Erdogan has. It massively, massively affected me personally and it inspired me like it has done millions of other people. Mm -hmm.